Hi, welcome to the second part of this video about playing bass in Alice in Chains. Today we're going to talk about Mike Starr's successor, Mike INS. Drug addiction had turned Mike Starr into quite a dark and mysterious figure during the end of his five-year tenure with the band. And compared to him, Mike INS was quite a happy camper. On his own admission, he had practically started his music career traveling on a private jet with Ozzy Osbourne after joining his band at the young age of 23. INS was an official member of Osborne's band during the recording of the No More Tears album, and even though he is credited on the record as bass and music inspiration, he didn't play on it. Bob Daisley was brought in to record the bass and none of INS playing is on the final album. Playing with Ozzy sure has its downsides. INS joined Alice in Chains in the early months of 1993 and brought in a more melodic approach and at the same time a more aggressive sound. His star was mainly a finger player, INS used the pick most of the time. He attributes his tone to the fact he picks very hard, a habit he picked from Zack Wilde during the Aussie years. According to INS, Zack would run up on him on stage and be like, come on, dig in, dig in! So to keep his head above water in the Aussie band, he just had to go for it. But even though his playing in Alice in Chains is characterized by a greedy, muscular tone, he also brought in a melodic sensibility that helped to elevate the band's material beyond the typical rock metal sound. The style was immediately apparent on his debut EP with the band Jar of Flies, especially on the single No Excuses or in songs like Heaven Beside You from their self-titled 1995 release. Both albums were also milestones for the band, both debuting at number one on the Billboard 200 chart. Especially on Jar of Flies, Ines immediately showcased his sense of melody, for example, on the beautiful acoustic guitar style arpeggio of Rotten Apple. <laughs> Nutshell is also pretty cool with a nice descending scale starting from the higher octave of the root. then leaning on the 5th to add suspension and then going down from the 5th to the root see the pattern? Nutshell is made of only two chords and the bass is the element that keeps the instrumental part interesting melodically speaking. No Excuses is also based on acoustic guitar chords and once again the bass keeps the melody interesting on the verse with its ninth and fourth licks and on the chorus with its walking bass line. Number two, the happy scales. Though Alice in Chains are known for their slow, broody minor key grinds, they do have a bunch of songs with a happier atmosphere based on major chords. Or maybe the bass carries the melody of the verse with a descending major scale which really defines the happy mood of the section. While the pentatonic licks during the chorus add a lot of movement to the part. On Heaven Beside You, the bass underlines the major quality of the tonal center of the verse, since the guitar is playing a sort of ambiguous blues bending that could be a major or minor third. A little major scale is also the element that underlines the major mood of I Stay Away. Number 3, use the open E. Of course, even though INS brought in a little joy into the mix, it wouldn't be Alice in Chains without that signature fat distorted loose E string growling. Number 4, Pedal Tone Riff. On a few tracks, Mike's hypnotic riffs 
work as a pedal tone for the whole song, keeping the melody grounded while guitar and vocals go their own way. When I stay away, Mike's pedal tone against the lame, creepy, chromatic melody creates a combination that defines the haunted atmosphere of the chorus. In sharp contrast with the melodic verse. On Brush Away we have a similar effect, with the bass line constructed on a triton earbud that gives the song its trademark disturbing mood. Number 5 used the triton. Speaking of triton, it seems to be one of INS's personal favorite intervals. Of course, like his predecessor Mike Starr, also INS adapted well to Jerry Cantor's songwriting and made a regular use of chromatic scales, bending, intended to play the main riff underneath the solo. All of these aspects appear in one of Alice in Chains' coolest bass lines of all time. Whether it's grinding away under riff-oriented tunes or providing the sub-hooks on mellower tracks, INS bass lines have become the pivot which the rest of the band revolves around, especially after being struck by tragedy, losing their iconic frontman Lane Staley in 2002. The band carried on and found new life with the addition of co-lead vocalist and rhythm guitar player William Duval in 2006. After the sudden death of former bass player Mike Starr in 2010, Drummer Sean Kinney added the initials LSMS on his drum kit, a tribute to Lane Staley and Mike Starr. Kinney explained, there's been six people in this band, and that's it. Cantrell added, and we roll up there. Thank you for watching, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and follow me on Instagram.